Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week we're going to be working on the junkyard bound dual band saw. There is a ton to do on this saw, but you know, we got to get started, make some good progress on it. So we're going to hustle on it this week. We're going to do the motor on it, we're going to do the hydraulic cylinder on it, and we're going to do the hydraulic pump on it. So, and some other stuff for sure. So thanks for watching, guys. Let's get started. So I want to do some work on the do-all saw today, at least some. And what I want to inspect, really, is this hydraulic cylinder. This is the one that controls the lift and descent of the actual saw itself. This thing is way too heavy to just have no assisted lift or descent. So we're going to have to have some sort of hydraulic lift on this thing. So I'm hoping that this cylinder is in good shape. The other two that I've looked at had some water damage, so we'll pull this off, we'll tear it down, see if it's in usable condition. Then I need to come up with some sort of plan to get this thing to where to lift automatically and then I can control the descent. So let's get some tools together. I'm going to pull this cylinder off. We'll uh, look at it and see if it's going to be usable. Hopefully it is. All right, so there's just two pins here. Both are threaded on the ends. It looks like 3 8 16 with two set screws that I think hold them in. I've got the saw lifted up a little bit, so I'm just going to loosen these. <laughs> well, that one's already loose. These set screws and see if I can't uh, maybe I've got a makeshift slide hammer here. Hopefully I can get them out. I don't know if this cylinder has a spring in it or what. Oh, it does, for sure. Anyway, there's one pin. It's got a divot in it for that set screw. Nothing. All right, so I didn't notice this. I guess it's just a threaded rod from the end here. I guess uh, made to either limit the travel or take the preload off that spring that's inside of here. So I probably should have done this to begin with. Just tighten it up. You know, it's getting, getting loose. Same as the other. Well, this should come off. Maybe. Alright, so I'm trying to clean up the hydraulic pump off of that uh, big do-all saw. Pulled it off also. Look how dirty it is. All old hydraulic pumps are dirty like this. Most, anyway. And, uh, needs a good bath. I'm hoping I can reuse this and that, and that it's good. It's hard to believe that this was under all that black um, oil and grit, but it cleaned up really well, and I'm hoping to reuse this. It's, uh, let me get you a shot of the tag here. All right, so it's Continental Hydraulics. It's a variable volume pump, which is nice to know. I'm, I'm assuming it has an internal bypass that you can adjust. It is a model 53420. It is 6.5 gallons per minute, 500 PSI, so it's fairly low pressure, and 1800 RPM. So it takes a SSU hydraulic fluid of 2 to 250 at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So nice little pump. Hopefully it's good, and I, it probably is, but you know, it's got a damaged, let me show you, got a damaged Woodruff key I gotta try to get out. Let me get this shaft cleaned up too. Peanut the squirrels helping with the restoration. Mm. 
Are you a squirrel whisperer? Yeah. <laughs> oh, get us back. Are you getting mauled by a squirrel? You shouldn't have me in a limb at the same time. <laughs> Not my face, for yours. <laughs> oh, get your belly. It's a silly squirrel. <laughs> All right, so I'm cleaning up the cylinder here. Um, I'm assuming this thing had some sort of bellow here. It's got a groove here, and then a groove here that had a zip tie on it. So something to protect the inside of this cylinder from all the grit getting in there. It's long gone though. Um, single acting cylinder only pushes in one direction. So I'm gonna have to probably come up with a, a bellow there. Maybe. We'll see. Just keep the grid out. Man, that's a large piston. So I'm really happy with the condition of this cylinder. I'm surprised, to be honest. It does have some scratches near the bottom of the cylinder where that protective bellow is missing and it got some grit up in there. But up near where the business end, where it does the ceiling, looks really good and it's the same on the inside of the cylinder. Scratches near the bottom, good up top. So what I'm gonna do is replace this O-ring, hone out this cylinder, precision stone the piston uh, that way when I install this with a new o-ring that these scratches don't uh, score my o-ring and cause this thing to leak so let's get set up we'll hone this out I'll just use my cylinder hone and a little bit of diesel fuel just wipe this thing a few times to knock those high spots off so hopefully you can see those scratches none of none of which are really bad but you know we're gonna try to get them out anyway a couple of them I can I can feel a few up, up on this top side. I can catch my nail in. to do was knock off those high spots. You know, I think that looks pretty good really. Good enough. Right, so I got the o-ring off. You can see the wear on it. It'd be some scratches and stuff. You'd just be asking for trouble. If you put that back in, it would leak for sure. All right, so I've already got in my new O-ring. New O-rings, you gotta buy them by the pack. The uh, standard O-ring was just, of course, round. What I 
purchased were quattro rings. It was just a four-sided ring. Supposedly, here in, here in McMaster, it says the lobes on these O-rings provide multiple points of contact for better seal than the round profile. Uh, they also require less compression to make a seal, and they offer a longer service life. So that is the reason why I decided to try these. Let me get you down here to show you this O-ring and uh, how I measured it and got the right one the first time. All right, so here is a look at both of them, the old one, just round standard O-ring and then the quattro ring. So you can see it has two sealing points on the OD and on the ID. Looks different. You know, serves the same purpose really. Let me show you my measure or the measuring tool that I used. I use this, McMaster calls it an inch gauge, but uh, just an O-ring measuring tool. So you just slide the O-ring into whichever slot it fits in. This one happens to be a 210, 0.210 inch or 5.33 millimeter. Then put it between the two expanding uh, tabs there and pull it to its taut or the sides get parallel. Then you know, read your dash number. So this happens to be a 338. So I just used those numbers and of course ordered it in the material I wanted, which was Boone N. And you know, that's it. Pretty, pretty simple, really. So this tool will save you a lot of headache. And of course, you could probably get it at a lot of places, but it runs, I think, 25 to 30 bucks. Saves you a lot of headache, that's for sure. I'm not sure a woodruff key is supposed to look like that. Let's see if I can get that out of there. So we have a pulley here that I need to bore out to three quarters. Now this pulley is going to be going on the little hydraulic pump off of the dual saw that we cleaned up today. But the original pulley where it had that damaged keyway and stuff chewed up the inside of it and really it was useless for that application. So I used it on that uh, reactor stir uh, modification that I'd done some time ago, a video on. This one's the same OD, the only problem is it's got a 5 8 bore so we need to bore this out to three quarter and uh, we'll be able to use it, but we got to put a keyway in it also, which I don't know that we'll have time for, but at least let's get this dialed in and punched out to three quarter. So we got a 5 8 dowel, just going to use that to line us up. It actually fits pretty good in there. We'll get our dial indicator on here, dial it in. I'm just going to use the bore of this to or the original bore here to dial this in. I think it probably be good enough. Well, wow, it's way out. So we'll tighten our highs and loosen our lows. All right, so there's our high jaw. So we'll loosen our low and tighten our highs. We're a long way off. That's within a thou. That's within two. I'm going to call that good enough. Alright, so here's a run out on the actual groove itself. Just about three thou, four thou. So. Except plenty acceptable for a V belt. So to go to three-quarter, we're not going to 
completely remove our keyway, but it won't make any difference. We'll just do it opposite of our uh, new keyway. So I think we're there. We should be. This is a uh, piece of three-quarter inch Thompson shaft. I think that is good enough. So we still got a little of the keyway left there, but that ain't gonna make any difference. So there's our little pump. I need to sit down and do some research on this pump, see what uh, what the deal is with the variable volume pump and how it adjusts. I'm sure there's probably a manual on this thing somewhere. There's our pulley. Fits as good as a pulley can, I guess. Looks good. I'm just not going to have time to cut set up, you know, cut the keyway and stuff. I got to come up with a way to hold this thing. I don't have a, a brooch set which would make quick work of a keyway. But I do have a shaper, but it also requires 10 times the time to get set up. So that's good enough for now, I think. Looks good. Okay, so I know this motor's supposed to move back and forth. It's got a big spring here. But I don't think it's supposed to do that. Got a big flywheel weight here. Let's pull that off and see if we can get the motor off this thing. And so it's just a big flywheel is what this looks like, big piece of steel. Hopefully it'll just pop right off. chunk of steel. So, got the belt off. You know, easy, straightforward. This definitely doesn't feel good. Feels like the bearings are dry. So, definitely got to come off. So about three hours later, 
you know, it's somewhat clean, at least externally. Now, I'm going to have to tear this down. It's definitely, uh, I think there's debris between the rotor and stator, like there was on the big K&T, but I don't expect this to be near as bad. But, uh, man, the cleaning these is such a pain. Between the rubber debris from the belt, the cutting oil, metal chips, and then, you know, just the hydraulic fluid because it's sitting beside the hydraulic pump, it took a lot to get this as clean as it is. Like I said, about three hours, so just a five horsepower general electric motor, 220, 440, three phase. So I need to try to get this pulley off. Hopefully it will come off. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't easily. But we'll try to get this off and then we'll see if we can't pull these end bells off. Hmm, that'll come out easy. That was just too easy. Not what I'm used to. Trying to get this thing apart without damaging anything. Looks like there is a mouse nest in there. Could have been some of our problem, you think? So I just stood this up on its end and lifted it out. It slid out really easy. It's definitely dirty, but it's nothing like that uh, K and T was, and the thing was a filthy mess. But it's been running good, so I'm, I'm definitely happy. Happy with what I've done on it. This one just needs brushed out and wiped out. It's got some goo in it. I think that was causing the, the sticky feeling that I was having that along with the uh, complete mouse nest. The rodents will get in here and gas motors, anything that sets, you can guarantee that you're going to have a rodent's nest in there, at least in my area. So rotor and stator look really good. I think the bearings are probably okay. I haven't checked them yet, but from what I'm seeing, the stickiness was probably just coming from that. So, yeah, don't hold me to those terms, rotor and stator, even though I believe that's what they're called and that's what I've always called them. And, you know, I'm not an electric motor um, expert, nor am I a hydraulic expert, a machining expert, or any of those things, you know, that I do. So I don't want to be held to a standard where I'm not allowed to make mistakes, because that's impossible for me to achieve. Um, and, you know, you can say something with conviction, uh, believing that you know what you're talking about when you may be completely wrong, which is, you know, sometimes the case with me and everybody that I've ever met. Uh, so, you know, don't hold me to a standard that I can't achieve. Um, and do your own research. That's probably a quicker way of saying all of that. Finally decided to rain here, which is nice. Hadn't rained in over a month. 
any turny substantial amount anyway. This is just diesel fuel. Um, I have yet to get my solution for my parts cleaner, but hopefully this week is kind of the plan. Let's see how that works out. That's just the shield or uh, I guess dirt and dust. This stuff gets filthy. dirty. So large front bearing and fairly small rear bearing. Um, this bearing here especially well both of them are going to get replaced. I just think it's a good idea but this one here definitely shows at least I think that it does the uh, signs of being hot. It's got some discoloration on this outer race that uh, I don't like very much. Let me get you a little closer look of it. See how it's darker in the center where those balls ran? And I don't think this thing had been greased since it was originally put together. And it doesn't sound great either. But it's dry too, so it probably worked, but I think it's best to put new ones in it. Back of the motor or the rear definitely dirtier than the front sometimes just where the motor's positioned and it sucks in a bunch of junk so i'm just gonna pick this out just something that won't scratch the windings pick it out for the most part then uh, take it outside and blow it out with compressed air enough. So, new cabinet for the shop. This is an HON. It's just a filing cabinet, but really I'm quite surprised with the quality of it. I picked it up locally for just the cost of getting it, really. It's not in perfect shape, but nothing in my shop is, so it fits in really well. And being a filing cabinet, you know, they can hold quite a bit of weight, so I've got it loaded down and it's still working really good. So, let me show you this thing, show you what I got in it and stuff, and uh, you know, you'll see. So, don't discount something like this when you go to look for storage because. It doesn't have to be a Lista. You know, a Lista usually cost you an arm and leg, and when you could pick up something like this, usually for pretty cheap. Let me show you what I got. I got some viewer mail also I'll share with you. All right, so here's the heaviest loaded drawer in the cabinet, and I still don't believe this thing's overloaded. You can imagine if this was full of files, it would be 
pretty heavy also. But just my, all my grinding fixtures or attachments. The, here's a piece of viewer mail that was sent into the channel by Andrew Eves. And it's just a, now I've already had have one of these, but the older style. Uh, but this is the newer model with the proper base and stuff on it to match the center height of all my other KOE stuff. This is a KOE spin fixture head and it has the 5C attachment in it and a 24 division index plate. He picked this up at an auction. I think he paid like 20 or 25 bucks for it and uh, didn't need it and offered to send it to me. So I really appreciate it. I've already used this a couple times. Sent me that. Sent me a couple V-blocks. Sent me this attachment that goes on it. Not the finger, but the snug and the bracket. Knock that off. And uh, a couple grinding wheels. So I really appreciate that. And as you can tell, you know, the cabinet is perfectly capable of holding quite a bit of weight. Let me show you the rest of the stuff that's in here. All right, so the second drawer down, just grinding wheels. I've uh, got my radius grinding attachment in here, where I, which I need to practice them with. So, but, uh, yeah, just uh, grinding stuff, man. Just That's what I've dedicated this cabinet, the majority of it, for. Here's one of the wheels that Andrew sent also. So, been using all this stuff. I really appreciate it. Um, if it wasn't for guys like Andrew, I wouldn't have half the stuff that I do. So I really appreciate it. So, you know, just abrasive working equipment, uh, pretty much. And then down here, you know, 5C collets, uh, TG100s, and my uh, radius dresser. And in the bottom is just more of the same. Air spindle and uh, abrasive wheels. So cleaner than it was, for sure. Uh, not clean enough to go into a hospital, but clean enough to go into a metal cutting bandsaw. Um, this end bell has some spacers here. Uh, two, well, shims. Two shims and then two spring washers that go in the end. So you've got to be careful not lose those. And those are seeming just to preload the bearings on the actual rotor. So we'll slide those in back the way they came. And we have our end plates nice and cleaned up. And these have to be lined up with the bolt holes that uh, go in the end bell here. So that's kind of a pain. We'll line those up and slide this thing back together hopefully. Got some punch marks on the case too to help. These just had screws in them. Blocks, I guess. I need to get an assortment of grease fittings. I'm assuming that uh, this thing only got greased one time. It was when it was new from the appearance of the inside. So I'm just greasing these bearings. Um, got the bottom plug out. There's another little plug here that goes in the bottom. So once I see grease, you know, coming out the bottom, I know that uh, the cavity is full. Otherwise, it'll just push it into the case of the motor and get everything filthy dirty.
Alright guys, I'm going to call it here. I think we made good, good progress this week for sure. You can bet when a piece of industrial equipment like that big do-all saw or really any of this stuff gets put out of service, getting ready to go to the scrap yard or, you know, something like that, that it is pretty much done. Uh, they run those things into the dirt. Given the cost of replacement, you know, they use them till they are unusable almost. So I expect to have to go over everything on that saw and then nothing will surprise me as far as wear or damage. But, you know, you have to start to finish, so that's what we're doing. Hydraulic cylinder's done, motor's done, new bearings cleaned out, and looks pretty good, I think. Hydraulic pump is cleaned up, just need to finish cutting the keyway in this pulley, which we'll need to pick up next week. Finish the headstock bearings on the mini lathe, all that's gone. Guest appearance by Peanut the Squirrel, that's crazy, and uh, the lovely Elizabeth, that's awesome. And, uh... That's it, I think. If you're not subscribed to the channel, do that. Click on my little guy. Huge thanks to my viewers, patrons, you know, subscribers. You know the deal. Share the videos with a friend. Help the channel grow. I really appreciate it. And that's it. So, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.